The following video contains spoilers. If you wish to complete the latest edition of the Hesperus Mystery, I suggest you skip this video. A couple of days ago, the individual known as Salvation sent updates to pilots who participated in the search of the Hesperus or the Adamaster. His message revealed that there was a series of beacons that were dropped by the Hesperus that could be used to locate the survivors of that ship. Within 0.4 seconds, the Canon Research Institute located the survivors. Below is the location of all the beacons if you wish to bookmark them yourself, or start from the first one and count the amount of stars in a 1700 light year search radius. In the trapezium sector, Yankee Uniform X ray Charlie 1 2 on planet 1A, you will find an anaconda that the survivors of the Hesperus crew had taken and called it the Proteus. On the immediate surroundings to the Proteus, you will see that the crew had set up a research base using materials from the anaconda and had left some logs that shed light on the fate of these individuals. The following are those logs. This is Lieutenant Hugo Kellerman. I was Deputy Security Chief aboard the Hesperus working for Azimuth Biochemicals. I decided to resume my reports, even though the chances of us being rescued seemed to be shrinking each day. After Farmer Sapien's sleeper agents took control, I managed to get some of the science team off ship using the Proteus. For the record, Private Adriana Velasco performed her duties exceptionally and her family should be informed of her bravery. We only escaped thanks to her. I just hope she found her own way home. I wanted to set course for an inhabited system, but Dr. Farrell insisted on investigating readings sent back by one of Azimuth's deep space probes. She believes that Farmer Sapien will focus all of the probes they sent to the California Nebula, but that we might find something interesting in the opposite direction. Well, she was dead right about that. There's no doubt that the structures on this moon weren't built by humans. Those strange arches and monoliths are over a million years old. According to molecular scans, Ackerman, the xenoarchaeologist, said it felt like he was walking through the ruined temples of forgotten gods. I just felt like a trespasser. We've also found even stranger things half buried in the ground as if fallen from the sky but they look more like starfish than starships the sort of deep sea creatures you find on ocean floors what the hell flew around in those Farrell thinks we are looking for an ancient battleground the structures and the starfish things are nothing alike suggesting totally different species two intelligent races on the same world incredible both far more technologically advanced than us, but not so advanced that they didn't try to kill each other. This is exactly what Asimov has been looking for, although I doubt they ever expected a discovery like this. I'm more concerned about surviving long enough to tell them about it. We've been here for two months now, living off recycled air, food and water. The scientists have turned the Proteus into a research facility and all I can do is keep out of their way while they analyse their findings and test samples. They've almost forgotten that we barely escaped mass slaughter. I spent a lot of time monitoring the sensors. If those farmer sapien mercenaries find us, we won't stand a chance. But I can't understand why Azimuth hasn't sent out rescue parties, unless the sleeper agents sabotaged our beacons before they were dropped. Did they pre-program them to stop transmitting? If they did, then nobody knows we're here. We're alone. Just us and the ghosts of the gods. This, this is Kellerman. I'll just give myself the last of the stimulants. That should, that should keep you going long enough to record this. To tell Azimuth how we died. Three days ago, I went with the survey team to the structure. Ackerman and Zhao had brought something back to life. 
I saw this pillar rise up from the ground with a large <coughs> with a large crystal inside it, blazing a brilliant light. After a million years, their machinery was still functioning. They fired up some kind of high energy particle accelerator, which shook the crystal from its moorings. <coughs> this didn't feel like archaeology to me, more like grave robbing. I should have known there'd be defences, but the hovering drone caught us by surprise. <coughs> it, va it vaporised Ackerman along with the three others. I managed to destroy it eventually, but there were more of them gliding around the structures and we got out fast. I offered to take the crystal back, thinking the drones might come looking for it, but Farrell already had her experiments ready to go. Weapons experiments. She told me... <coughs> <clears throat> she told me that this was always the priority for both the Adamaster and the Hesperus, locate non-human technology that could be developed for the military market. Azimuth wants to be the first corporation selling alien weaponry, which will make them bigger than serious. That's all they care about. <coughs> <coughs> That's who they've been working for all these years, no better than Farmer Sapien after all. After a few hours ago, I was woken up by this intense blue flash. <clears throat> it seemed to come from everywhere. I thought we were under attack. Then Farrell came stumbling out of her lab. Her clothes and body burned black and dropped dead. <clears throat> the others started collapsing within hours. I think there was some kind of radiation surge from the crystal we stole. I tried to get the ship's driving line again, but... <clears throat> too weak. I can hardly stand now. Pain in every muscle. Vision is blurred. My, my, my skin is like everybody else's. God knows what experiments Fowl was running, but now there's three. Three dead races on this moon. <coughs> we shouldn't we shouldn't be here. Humans <coughs> don't <coughs> humans don't belong. If Azimuth finds us. Please don't find us. Now firstly, the location of this site must be taken into account. A Guardian site so close to the rumoured Fargoid sector of Cold 70 is of interest. My thoughts on this place is that it was some kind of monitoring station close to the Fargoid space that the Guardians were using to keep an eye on the Fargoids if in fact the site was built after the Guardian War. Another possibility is that the site could have predated this war and that it was attacked in the early stages of that war. I am inclined to lean in the direction of the former theory as early military engagements between the Guardians and the Fargoids went badly for the Guardians. The surviving crew of the Hesperus found a Guardian site that had Fargoid vessel cadavers surrounding its location, suggesting that the site had been attacked and the Guardians had repelled this assault, killing a number of Fargoids in the process. When studying the site, Hesperus scientists uncovered a Guardian relic that bore similarities to the Guardian relics found at other Guardian tomb worlds, at least in its description. Rising from the grounds and requiring a laser to dislodge from the mountains. The Hesperus crew used some kind of particle accelerator to remove this relic and were met with Guardian drones who killed a number of them. They then took the relic back to their base and were studying it with potential weaponry uses in mind. The lead scientist, Dr. Farrell, had triggered some kind of adverse reaction, which resulted in her and the rest of her crew receiving a lethal dosage of radiation, killing all of them. This reaction from Guardian technology has not been observed before. Noted, a few hundred years could have given us a better understanding of these kinds of alien artifacts and any possible booby trap may have been detected. But it is also noted that this location was not known to humanity until recent, meaning our first encounters with Guardian technology was in the current timeline, not hundreds of years in the past. 
one of the other strange occurrences of alien technology that has an adverse reaction to humans, yet is not thought to be Fargoid technology, is at the site known as Communications Array Delta 69, at Col 285 Sector Bravo Golf-0 Delta 6-93. At this site, the crew found a dead human who had disappeared some time before under mysterious circumstances. Shortly after finding his corpse, the station personnel noted a strange radio signal emanating from an extreme gravitational anomaly 10 kilometers from the array. Although the corpse of this individual did not bear radiation dosages or in fact any other cause of death, the way he just appeared out of nowhere may be some kind of clue as to what we are currently dealing with. The relic that was found by the Hesperus crew had obvious military applications, and the fact that there was far great vessels surrounding this site may be because this device was in fact a weapon of some kind. What kind of race would value a weapon that only reacts to biological entities? The mysterious individual, known as Salvation, is also of curiosity to me on this. How does he know so much of the fate of the Hesperus and its crew, yet no superpower could locate this vessel? Surely if he was acting on behalf of the club or some other human agency, he would have handed over his findings to his masters, themselves benefiting from a device such as the one the science team had found. Why is it? He values these findings as key to humanity's salvation. Was this relic different to the others? What have we found out that shed some new light on the larger picture of what awaits the human race? Whatever path salvation is leading us down, it includes the Guardians, their technology and the Fargoids. We all thought that it was the Fargoids and the Fargoids alone that the Hesperus was looking for, just like its sister ship. Well, we now know that the lead scientist of this ill-fated expedition had information on the location of Guardian technology, and it was this that they were looking for. Whether it leads us to the discovery of some kind of new weapon for us to fight a large-scale invasion of Fargoid vessels, or it is something else, remains to be seen. Thank you for the watch. I would like to thank the official members of the channel, David Gate, Asoka Ashley Tanyo, Swift Dog Sive, Ministry of Magic Department of Mysteries, Patrick Green, the Wandering Reapers Gaming Community, Commander Omega 88, Alex Simmon, and Mol Olson. Membership options and coffee links are in the description and on the homepage of the channel if you want to see some exclusive videos in the members section, including an extended version of this video. Until next time, Commanders, 07. Oh,